Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Uh, today I'm going to paint a bumblebee, just a simple bumblebee, and we're going to put a little bit of a background on him that's going to be very easy. So let's get started. Now first of all I need to sketch the bee, and uh, that's what I'm going to do first of all. And rather than have you being bored by that, I'm going to do that off camera and I will be back as quick as a flash. Okay, so I've done the sketch of the bee, just a very simple outline sketch there. And I'm going to do this in pen and ink and then wash today, um, following a design that I did a long time ago and uh, just doing it in a slightly different way today. So I've got uh, my materials here, which will be my Stettler pigment liners, a waterproof black pen with a fine uh, nib. These ones range from 0.05 to 0.8 millimeters. So uh, a good range of thicknesses there if you need more than one. And then because the bee doesn't have very much color in it, a uh, limited palette today of three colors, that's quinacridone gold, lemon yellow, and uh, black. Any black will do, uh, lamp black, for example, or any of the dark uh, grays like uh, Payne's gray would also probably do. Um, lemon yellow, because it's more of a transparent color, lemon yellow or transparent yellow or any one of those would do um, cadmium lemon probably although that's a little bit more opaque but it's probably going to be fine and for the darker parts of the um, yellow on the bee quinacridone gold a good standby so uh, let's get started with the uh, the sketch so i'm going to use a 0.3 and hopefully it's got some ink in it I'm going to have to get a new set of these soon. Yes, that one looks like it's going to be okay. So I will just um, sketch this in, starting with the antennae, and then after I've done that, I'll probably rub out the pencil lines. So um, the good thing about um, doing a pen and ink of something like a bee, if you uh, you feel so, that way inclined is that you can do lots of broken lines and that kind of gives you a bit of an indication of the fuzziness of the bee um, rather than having a solid line as a guide which you get when you trace a pencil sketch or something like that you can get a little bit more um, free with your work if you want and then after you've painted it, you can come back in and um, emphasize the hairiness of it with lots of little short lines um, on, on the black parts. So you'll see what I mean when we, when we get into it a bit more. So that's, uh, that's that. And then we've got the, the veins on the wings a little bit. Of course, you can do this design in just pure watercolour. You don't have to use a pen, but um, this is quite a good way of doing it. And we mustn't forget this leg here, which I forgot to draw. So this one out here, it's a little bit bigger. Okay, so that will do for a start. And uh, hopefully we can remove the pencil lines. Better to do that now, if you're going to take the pencil off, um, it's better to do it before you start to paint because the paint will stop you from being able to rub these off. But sometimes I leave the pencil in as well because that just gives another level of interest. So it all depends how you're feeling on that particular day. Okay, so I'm going to start with the yellow. And to try to stop myself from being too tight, um, which some people might um, identify with, I'm going to use quite a big brush. This is a number 11 round. And although it's quite a small painting, I'm going to uh, use a big brush to avoid uh, too much tightness. And I'm just going to drop that <coughs> yellow in there. 
and uh, looking at my reference material there's quite a big area of black next and then there's a stripe that's that's beige that's black this one is yellow and so that one is going to be yellow too and we're just going to put a little bit there as well because the body is under the wing okay and then I'm going to pick up some Glacridone gold and I'm just going to literally drop that in without any kind of brush strokes whatsoever. Just dabbing it in. Going over the lines. And letting that spread. And if you've got time to sit and watch it spread, that's all well and good. Maybe drop in a little bit more of the yellow to deepen that. So now what we do is we make a cup of tea and we let that settle and then we come back in with the black. Okay, so that should be dry enough to go ahead now. If there's a little bit of running, um, it won't matter too much because that will probably just indicate the um, hairiness of the bee. So I'm just now going to pick up some, some black and I'm going to uh, start with the head and just drop in keeping away from the yellow as much as I can and using the big brush to stay light and free. And then this part of the bee has got an area of light in the middle where the light is catching on his shininess. So I'm going to just try to reserve those lights a little bit and I'll soften that later. And I'll come back to that in a sec. And you can see it's just bleeding a little bit there and I'm hoping that's not going to bleed too much. Um, I'm holding my brush quite a long way away from the ferrule so that I'm looser, but resting my arm on the paper so that I maintain a certain amount of control. As much control as I need. And then I'm bringing the grey in here as well, with the black. And this one here uh, on my particular bee was a bit lighter, so I'm not going to pick up any more paint. I'm just going to keep it light down there, and I'm not going to play with that at all. And then I'm just going to rinse out my brush, and I'm going to try just dropping some water in there and uh, allowing that to, to bleed back, and we'll see how that works. And I'm going to use the same technique on the tail area here which is much lighter than the rest of the black areas so we'll see how that dries up and then in a second or two once that's done its thing a little bit we'll tackle the wings now for the wings on the bee we're just going to um, do them in a sort of light gray and um, I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I'm just going to indicate a few areas of shadow, especially near to the um, body of the bee. And um, going over going over the outside edge somewhat to give the idea that the wings are moving. And then the little legs just fill those in a little bit there. And that's pretty much the colouring part finished. So, that's our B. And I'm going to be brave and 
going to give him a background. So I'm just going to wet the area around the bee a little bit. And then I'm going to drop in, I'm going to pretend he's on lilac. Uh, not lilac, lavender. So another colour. I didn't mention this at the beginning because I hadn't made up my mind to do that. And then I'm just going to uh, drop some colour in. And allow it to spread. A few spatters. Here, and we'll let that dry. Okay, so now the bee is dry, and uh, we could leave it like that, it's uh, fine, really. But I'm going to just emphasize some of the areas of a uh, pen with a little bit more ink just to um, create a little bit more structure. You don't have to do this, but uh, and and be careful if you do add more that you don't go too far. You don't want to spoil the any happy accidents that you might have had and and so on and so forth. But you might want to put in some sort of hairy um, effects with the pen, just breaking the line where it goes into the yellow. A little bit. Or you may not want to do that. Depends how much ink you like on your watercolour. Some people like a lot, some people like very little. Quite pleased with the way the background came out there. It doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to now pick up a slightly smaller brush. If I can reach one. There we are. I'm just going to come into the um, light areas of the bee and just um, vary the shadows a little bit using, I mean it's very light so in some parts I'm going to go over what was there before other parts is is new. I think I might just darken that a little bit and maybe here, although I, I like that effect where it's run there, I think I need to just spread that out a little bit so it's not too bright underneath his wing. And if we could allow some of the yellow to sort of bleed onto the edge of the wing there a little bit because that looks quite nice. And just soften some of the edges like that a little bit too. And I think maybe strengthen the black just a bit. I know he's a bit more grey down there, but that looks a bit more balanced. So there we are. I won't play with that anymore. I'm going to call that done. Hope you enjoyed that. Early morning B. Um, people worry about backgrounds a lot, and it is incredibly nerve-wracking when you uh, you have a, a painting that maybe has got to this stage, and you think to yourself, ah, "What can I do? It I can't just have a B sitting there like that." So at the very least, you can do is to do some spatter. But if you do a um, a little bit of wetting around, dropping a colour in, and keeping your fingers firmly crossed then hopefully it will work out. So give it a try. And uh, don't forget to post your efforts on the um, 
Facebook page, Learn to Paint Watercolour. If you want the sketch, you can download that for free on dianeanton.com. So just pop over there to our website and uh, you'll find all of the sketches for the important paintings, ones with the slightly more difficult outlines. They're all available over there. So happy painting everybody and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye bye.